six. intention of the Mass. O Eternal Father, I offer you this holy sacrifice of your highest praise with the same love, humility and devotion, with the same intention and for the same end and aim as your beloved Son, the Eternal High Priest, Jesus Christ himself, offers it to you. I offer it especially for the greater glory and beatitude of St. Jude Thaddeus in thanksgiving for all the graces and bliss bestowed upon him and for my spiritual and temporal needs, particularly for... Amen. Amen. Novena Prayer for Special Favors Glorious Apostle St. Jude Thaddeus, True relative of Jesus and Mary, I greet you through the sacred heart of Jesus. Through this heart, I praise and thank God for all the graces he has bestowed upon you. Humbly prostrate before you, I implore you through this heart to look down upon me with compassion. Despise not my poor prayers, let not my trust be confounded. God has granted you the privilege of aiding mankind in the most desperate cases. Come to my aid that I may praise the mercy of God. All my life I will be grateful to you and will be your faithful devotee until I can thank you in heaven. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, Sunday is the day of the Lord. And today we have a beautiful message in the gospel wherein Jesus tells the young man, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. This is the essence of our religion. This is the essence of all our dealings with each other. This is the essence of the life of the saints, to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and to love others as we love God himself. My dear brothers and sisters, you remember today St. Jude in a very special way, as the feast is just two days away, and St. Jude or any other saint lived primarily for God, secondarily for the others, and thirdly only for themselves. Perhaps our world is a different one. We try to live for ourselves. We try to perhaps reach out to the others, and God comes last. St. Jude tells us, ultimately, God matters more than anything else in our life. And therefore, taking his life before us as a model, let us ask the Lord for the grace for all the parishioners of this parish, especially those that are home, those that are sick, those that are perhaps not able to connect themselves, that God may bless all of them and bless all the families of this parish. I understand we are in this COVID situation. There would have surely been more people here and more people surely would have participated in these festivities, but the Lord has his own ways of doing things. And therefore, let us pray to God for all the corona patients, perhaps some in our families, the ones that are taking care of them, and especially for those that have been impoverished by this situation with no jobs, with no work, with no school, with no perhaps any other things to do, but God is our hope. Therefore, let us offer this Eucharist for the members of every family in this parish. Let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, O Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Hymn number 81.
let us pray. Almighty, our living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within you, the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. If you inflict any widow or orphan, my wrath shall burn against you. A reading from the book of Exodus. This says the Lord, you shall not wrong a stranger or oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall not afflict any widow or orphan. If you do afflict them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry and my wrath will burn. And I will kill you with the sword and your wives shall become widows, and your children fatherless. If you lend money to any of my people with you who is poor, you shall not be to him as a creditor, and you shall not exact interest from him. If you ever take your neighbor's garment in pledge, you shall restore it to him before the sun goes down, for that is his only covering. It is his mantle for his body. In what else shall he sleep? If he cries to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 5 to 10. You turn from idol to serve a living and a true God and to wait for his son. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators for us and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction 
with joy inspired by the holy spirit so that you became an example to the all the believers in the macedonia and alacha for not only has the word of the lord sounded forth from you in macedonia and alacha but your faith in god has gone forth everywhere so that we need not say anything for they themselves report concerning us what a welcome we had among you and how you turn to god from idols to serve a living and true god and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead jesus who delivered us from the wrath to come the word of the lord thanks be to god hymn number 108 Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they came together. and one of them a lawyer asked him a question to test him teacher which is the greatest commandment in the law and he said to him you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind this is the great and first commandment and a second is like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself and these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets the gospel of the lord praise to you lord, lord jesus christ, christ. my dear brothers and sisters in christ i was looking at the watch because it's only 6 o'clock father told me supper is at 7:30 so i have to i can give a little longer sermon i think i am very happy to celebrate your feast and god has his own plans for us every day of our life perhaps last year there were more people there was more joy there were more activities more programs and suddenly we are in a vacuum in a vacuum we do not know how it has come about we can't curse anybody we can't grumble and we find ourselves in a situation where we are helpless 
And so in this context, we can ask, what does the message of Jude mean for us? You are celebrating the feast of St. Jude. And date-wise, it's another two days. And Sundays, we normally don't celebrate the feasts of the saints as such, because all the saints look up to Jesus and Sunday, we call it the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. It has got the day of the, the Lord, the boss as it were. And therefore it's not reserved for anything else except to give honor, glory and adoration of the Lord. We have a beautiful message in the gospel today. A message which Jude perfectly kept up because for him Jesus was most important, God was most important in his life. The message is very simple. In fact, Jesus gives today the definition of a religion. I'm not saying Christian religion, any religion. The definition of a religion, the essence of every religion. And what is it? Love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. There are four points. First of all, love your God with all your heart. Secondly, love your God with all your soul. And thirdly, love your God with all your mind and fourthly love your neighbor as yourself it might look very strange for us we have heard this again and again and ultimately what is the test that whether we are obeying this commandment or not well there are two sides of it one the side of god whom we don't see and the other we have the side of the neighbor the neighbor means not just who is sitting at your side, whose house is your neighborly one. The definition of neighbor in the Gospel of Luke, in the Good Samaritan, the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus said, who is my neighbor? My neighbor is anyone who is in need. Anyone who is in need. Have we mentioned any religion? Have we mentioned any caste? Have we mentioned any relatives? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Anyone who is in need. A few months ago when the corona started, you know that how fearful we were in those months of April and May, March, April. We were not allowed to go out. There was a big sort of curfew for a month, I think, and we were all scared. We were asked to wear the masks. We were not allowed to go, we were not allowed to speak. And in this frightful atmosphere, as it were, many things happened. One day in the evening, about seven o'clock, I got a phone call. And in the phone call, the hospital rang up to me. Bishop, there is a dead body here. Someone has died and he is a Christian. He is a Christian. Unfortunately, none of his people are there and we are trying to get this priest or that priest, that church, but no one is responding. What do we do with his body? Because no one is ready to bury it. I thought to myself, what would I do? I can't ask some people to go and get the body because everyone was so scared these days even to look at the body as such. After about an hour, I got a, another phone call. It was from a Muslim. I know his name. I don't say because. And this man told me on the phone, Father, I think you are having a problem. We are close to the hospitals. We are the members of what an association called Mercy Angels. And can we do the burial of your person? 
I thought to myself, this is a Muslim. He wants to bury a Christian. And unfortunately, none of us are able to go closer and do it. I took some time to reply to him, but then I said, brother, go ahead, go ahead. I rang up to that particular parish and they brought the body at night and there was a lot of commotion there also. About, I think, nine, ten o'clock, they buried the body. The Muslims buried a Christian. I don't want to dissect it much more. Whether it is good, whether it's lawful, whether it's legal, whether it's religious also, I don't want to ask. In one seminar that I attended of these uh, burial groups, suddenly one person got up and said, Father, we believe that the dead body has no religion. The dead body has no religion. So therefore, don't let us not make a distinction of we Christians bearing the Christians and Hindus bearing the cremating the other one. Our group is ready to do anything. Perhaps that's the essence of the commandment today. Love your God and love your neighbor. St. John puts it very nicely in his letter to say that, how can you say that you love God whom you don't see? When you don't love your neighbor whom you are seeing every day, how can you say that you love God? So let us first analyze these three statements, or rather three elements of Jesus' command. Love your God with all your heart. Where is your heart? We at once show the heart is here. Science tells us heart is the most important body of the organ of the organ of the our person. And perhaps medicines may say brain is more important. I do not know. I am not a doctor, but heart is an important organ. And so much so that traditionally heart has come to be the center of the person the center of the person and therefore to say that i give my heart to you you know the lovers they say that the sign and symbol of a love is the heart itself the heart itself and therefore jesus knows when he refers this to the old testament shema israel they call it love your god with all your heart in the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, the wisdom speaker says, just as you see your face in the water, you see your person in your heart. Your heart reflects what you are. Because the heart is the seat wherein you have all the good in you, perhaps all the bad in you also. So therefore, heart is most important. Jesus himself says in the Gospel of Luke chapter 6, your treasure is where your heart is. And that is why we call the most loved and beloved ones, you are my treasure, I say. You are my treasure, I say, because heart is the most important. And heart is the place and the thing perhaps that gives value to our life. You know, when Jesus was tempted, we can say that he was tempted in these three temptations that refer to the heart, refer to the soul, refer to the mind. The first temptation of Jesus is, you can convert these stones into bread because you are hungry. When a man is hungry, he doesn't wait for supermarket food or fast food and all. When you are hungry for one day, three days, five days, you eat what is put in front of you. And you have to eat because you have to live. But Jesus knows that this is the most important thing, but then he doesn't succumb to his temptation. He tells the devil, man does not live by bread alone. He lives by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That means God is the one who is the source, who is the center of your life. And as much as your heart is important for you, God is important for you. The second is, 
Love your God with all your soul. What is the soul? Has anyone seen the soul? The soul is the immaterial, perhaps, element of our body. And soul is a spiritual thing. But being spiritual, anything that is spiritual, I bow my head. I bow in front of a blessed sacrament. I bow in front of the Bible. I bow in front of the statue, perhaps, to show my regard. And there's your soul. That is the element of your soul, your spirituality. And so Jesus, when he was tempted the second time or the third time, when the devil takes him to that big pinnacle of the temple and says, he shows him everything and says, if you bow at me, if you prostrate at me, I shall give you. I shall give you. And that's the same temptation that we have. Because we are called upon to bow at so many things in our life, but not God. Not God. Today, perhaps, nothing is holy for us. Or nothing is more important for us than what we are at. My job is very important. If I lose my job, I don't mind giving up the church. I don't mind working on Sunday, but my job is important for you. My money is more important. My deposits are very important. My family, my child is so important, I would give up everything, but I will adore all these things. And this is the second temptation. Love God with all your soul. And thirdly, love your God with all your mind. You know, mind is a terrible thing because I can understand you are sitting in front of me, but if your mind is not here, I cannot see it, I cannot do anything out of it. Because our mind travels, our thoughts, our imaginations, our desires, our intentions, they are just flying. And though you may have heart in your ways in God, though your soul may be God, your mind can disturb you, can distract you. And therefore, Jesus says, with all your mind, which is more important for us today. And the second part of it, which is also very, very important, Jesus doesn't live at this. Because many of us are good in the church, good in our rosary, good in our novenas, good in our Bible. Perhaps we are very good in that. But if that was the thing, it would be only one side of the coin. The second side is the side of our neighbor or anyone else that he comes in front of us who is in need. You know, when you take a coin, we don't have coins now. When you take a coin and if the market man sees the coin and says, this other side is scraped off, he said this has no value. Though one side may be good, the other side is scraped off. Many of our lives is like this. We are very good in the godly things. We are very good in our churchy things, but then perhaps we have missed out our earthly things, our earthly persons and needs. So therefore Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. The comparison or perhaps the model is as yourself. How would you look after yourself? Do you punish yourself? Do you deprive yourself? Do you perhaps want something to be said no to you or yes to you? Do the same thing to the other. The same to the other. The first reading has beautiful reference that if you afflict any widow or orphan, my wrath, my wrath shall come against you. If you do afflict them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear that cry and my wrath will burn and I will kill you with a sword. And the future things also are there. Which means God sees the persons in as much as he sees himself. This is the two sides of the coin of our religion, as it were. You know, Mahatma Gandhi, he said it more than once. I love Christianity, but I don't like Christians. It's because of this. We don't live our life. We don't want to live a Christian life that has also got to do with others, with the other people. And very often, perhaps, we are and the mind, once again I say the mind, the mind analyzes, you want to help somebody, 
but at once someone said he may be a robber he may not be deserving he may not be coming he has not he has not done anything to you and he may not be able to do anything to do in future why help him help her now mind destroys many of our good intentions and perhaps for those that god has been close to us we can only recognize god's presence in others you know mother teresa many times she was asked and it seems once publicly she was asked by some reporter mother teresa why do you have to go to their gutter the people fall in the gutter the municipality people are there they will take them and go why you have to dirty yourself nothing good will comes out from them if they are drunkards who fall in the gutter and mother teresa is supposed to have said i do this service not because of them i see the face of god in them that's the saintliness that is saint jude's quality to see to see god in others to see godly things in others this morning at mass i said a small anecdote that has come in the whatsapp perhaps many of you must have read it also it's about a small boy who's standing in front of a shop a mall a big mall and is looking through the glass beautifully this window shopping the shoes that are kept he is what you say every one of them nicely there's a lady who is in a hurry to go inside and she sees this boy and says son what are you looking no ma'am i'm just looking at the shoes do you want to buy them he said no 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 i have no money i can't buy them come she says she takes him inside and as she makes her purchases tells the salesman to give us shoes of his size should have seen the face of that salesman he squirms because with the dirty legs he has come and if he tries my shoes i'll have to clean all the shoes that he tries and he tells him go and clean yourself and come he comes back and fortunately there is a shoe that he chooses fits him nicely and he's so happy and the woman pays the bill and as she is going out the boy slowly tucks the woman and says ma'am are you god and she is shocked he says son what are you asking i am not god why are you asking me this question no ma'am i just ask are you god and then she excuses herself and says i am not god i am a child of god she says ha ah, he says i knew that you are related to god that's why you can do these things perhaps children don't understand much but they can see god in some of us they can see the mercy and kindness in some of us that is godliness and today we ask god which endured for this quality especially because in order to recognize god in others so that the commandment of love your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind can be kept up in our neighborliness you are fortunate to have saint jude as your patron you know he is a very special saint and the other saints have their own qualities or perhaps special charisms for which they are known of saint teresa is known for the missionary zeal saint francis assisi is known for environment saint joseph is known for a good death and the other things saint anthony is known for helping people saint jude something very special which is not there in any other saint what is it he is called the patron of hopeless cases and impossible times or impossible occasions and i say you have this patron to ask the the intercession of god through saint jude for those things that we cannot achieve for those things that we cannot get and god will not give you it's only if it's only for yourself god will surely give you even those impossible things which you think you may not get god will give you as soon as much you can reach out to the others you can reach out to those who are needy and that's the essence of saintliness of saint jude what we hear in today's gospel so my dear brothers and sisters i wish you a very happy feast i understand those that are not able to come surely miss it but through the whatsapp and the 
the YouTube media. I'm sure they are following this mass and Father Kanikaraj has been so gracious every time he comes to meet me. He's so gracious and surely tells about your parish. Fortunately, I have known Father Kanikaraj much before I came to the diocese. When I was a young priest, he was in the bishop's house. He was in charge of the family apostate and I was also the family apostate and we used to converse and I used to use his books. I used to take his books for my sermons and devotions. And so you have a good parish priest. You have perhaps the good sisters here. You have good families here. You have families here who are ready to sacrifice for the sake of the church, for the sake of the good cause. And I am told that the other two parishes that have come of the Akashnagar and also is the parish of uh, Bhupsandra also were helped by you and now perhaps you are also putting some plans to at least repair and renovate this church and I'm sure you will be generous. I have told Father that I will also be but then this is a very bad time for us and for you also I know that because we are in this pandemic situation, we can't help support the others and the Archdiocese also is in a situation where we are helping more than 80 churches in our diocese with absolutely no income whatsoever. We are even helping them with a candle and perhaps the candlestick also. In this situation it's difficult for us but St. Jude is a patron of impossible cases an impossible situation. I'm sure we will intercede, we will pray, and together we will try to do what we can. I wish you once again a very happy feast. Please stand. <clears throat> I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the direction of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, let us turn to our loving Father. He is prompting us to pray. Let us submit our wants and needs in these intercessory prayers that we recite now. Let your response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our Pope Francis, our Archbishop, all the bishops and all the ministers, that they may unfailingly voice on behalf of the poor, the widows and the orphans. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the workers. Lord, bless the owners to respect the cry for justice of fair wage and fair treatment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all the migrants, that they may be treated with kindness and humanness. Bless us to welcome them as we welcome Christ in our homes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all the dead, that they may find eternal rest at the bosom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us now pray for our personal intentions 
especially for those intentions of ours for which we need the intercession of St. Jude in our life and especially for our families. Lord, grant all the prayers of our heart. Guide us to love you with all our heart, soul and mind. Make us instruments to build the joyful community through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hymn number 224. <laughs> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your, your hands for, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all in your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on the apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humility, and offer all humanity, our heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. <laughs>
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make, a, make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, particularly Saint Jyotha Deus, and whose constant intercession in your presence we relay for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis Apu and Peter Machado, our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our brother, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
through him, with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ meet a life for receive it. Hymn number 289. When you come to receive the communion, see, maintain the distance. Mm, don't be far away and don't stretch, or don't come so near. It is happening. So see the distance when you come to receive the communion. And I request only the Catholics, if there are any Hindus, please be seated and pray. <coughs>
today said 38th sunday in our time but we had a feast a patron saint saint jude tadeus jude means you know the giver of joy tadeus means generosity he is very generous and we know that one is a saint of hopeless cases is a saint of hope and is a saint of last cases and so happy that one when i approached his grace i told that we are going to celebrate the last sunday of the month of october then he was so happy he did not say anything yes i will come that i will come and he was so glad and what i observed when i moved and as bishop was telling as a priest he used to come i was a director in acc archdiocesan community center he used to come and sit with me so silent man those days now bishop he has to speak though he has done his uh, law he was so silent very good observer observes everything and what i found in him is humility humility example the best example is that one once we become bishops definitely we want to show up that is there the inner psychologically inner feeling they want to show up. he said in the beginning itself don't call me archbishop don't call me your grace don't call you just call me father that is enough if you call me your grace then i'll find you i'll find you but anyway we priests have got used to this one i can't call him father with great difficulty sometimes i called him father but naturally your grace only he told me also once don't call me your grace he call me father so it's very difficult i'm sorry your grace we call grace only can't call father but he likes to be called as father and anybody can approach him that is also his important aspect anyone can approach him sweetly welcomes that i have seen my I experienced in my life approaches and he has got so many desires he wants to build our bangalore diocese as one of the models and so much let us pray for all his desires let his desires for the church be fulfilled according to the holy will of god and where there is humility you can find all other characters mother mary is the best example god considered her because of her humility and here i say few words about our grace is because of humility is humility we can definitely once again i repeat we can expect all other virtues so as yes, god let god bless him with a good health very fat and health and sound mind and beautiful preaching about he was explaining about the word of god about the gospel so once again i thank him with all my heart and sincerely i thank him for having accepted and come over your dose said corona time pandemic time but he accepted to come and you to offer this man for all of us and we are of you and because of me i thank him sincerely thank you your grace and i thank for the balan also secretary he is also whenever i go he smiles first he smiles as bishop he smiles and welcomes he just will consult that he has got that heart so i thank him and we have a few and me thank you father balan and i thank leila perera and the choir is very important very important sometimes we forget that i thank her and group members having given a beautiful voice and i thank each one of you and i wish you also very happy feast of uh, patron saint jude tadeus and let him bless you let him intercede for you and i request his grace to speak few words to us 
and i thank cyril and company for the direct telecast let us pray may your sacraments o lord we pray perfect in us what lies within them that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through christ our lord The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May God, the glory and joy of Saint Jude, who has caused you to be strengthened by means of his outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Free to the intercession of Saint Jude from the present ills, and formed by the example of his holy way of life. May you ever be devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. So that together with all you may possess the joys of homeland where holy church rejoices that her children are admitted in perpetual peace in the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go oh, in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please be seated for a moment. Dear fathers, dear my dear people of God, I once again wish you a very happy feast, and I thank Father Kanikaraj very specially for his welcome and his ever. ready hospitality that he gives me i have told him that we will surely take seriously his request of renovating renewing the presbytery but soon we will take it i am told that people are interested many of you are helping father and surely there will be some solution for even our problems of finance sin jude will not disappoint us so we will start the work soon as regards the other things i have to i'm telling in every place that i go our churches are open people can return people can return for masses and one of the things perhaps only god has a solution only god has a vaccine for this there is no one else and there is no other solution therefore let us trust in god um for the services and also as much as possible when you cannot follow through the youtube and through the media our masses and other devotions this month is called month of october is called the month of two m's two m's one is month of mary and month of the missions you may remember that in mission sunday october month people were very much involved in gathering more and more contributions from the churches for the sake of the missions we are not able to do it now much but all the same our spiritual campaign our spiritual longing for the mission continues and every day from 7 to 7:45 another eight days are there from the 1st of october we started 7 to 7:45 on the youtube we have a program of the missions prayer for the missions and also you get to see the missionaries the mission works the mission countries that perhaps our heart and mind goes to it and therefore i request you to follow it as regards you know that we are not able to do collections or uh, contributions for the missions we can't have fancy fate some have food fest so many collections this year it's, it's not going to be so easy so therefore i have postponed the mission sunday to january 10th of january and till then on the youtube we have certain competitions 
we have certain games as it were that will be shown to you every time perhaps we call it missio ludos the word ludo means games or competitions and therefore singing competition dance competition the talent competition etc and for which the people who can and our children our youth not only here everywhere even outside the diocese can participate with a small donation which will go for mission sunday collection so therefore please cooperate with us in that you know this week or at the end of this week we come to the first of november feast of all the saints including saint jude once again you can celebrate saint jude celebrate the feast if you want because first so november is the feast of all the saints and for us in karnataka it's a karnataka day also karnataka rajyotsava day our state day and therefore just as we celebrate other feasts we celebrate the goodness the kindness and the mercy of god to our state and we pray for our state leaders i would request you to attend the mass that day if possible and all the churches of ours have been instructed to pray for karnataka for ajyotsava very specially the 2nd of november is also going to be a very a very lonely thing for us i have not allowed masses in the cemeteries this year because you know the problem more and more people go there some of them are not even taking precautions and all of the people attending mass in the cemetery it's not very healthy therefore i have told the priests not to have masses this year in the cemetery but the masses will be here in the church and the priest will come to bless the grave also it's an individual visit so therefore that will be there but the masses in the cemetery will not be there father cyril victor who is managing very well our acc archdiocese and communication center of at which time father kanikaraj was also the secretary and during his time lot of books he has brought out and father cyril victor would like to br- bring up also these media so that people can follow us and therefore there is a need of a, a studio a studio that is to be made in our in our palana bhavan because we just now we can see people are our technicians are going out to record here there and some of the programs we don't have the studios we have to hire the studios we have to hire the technicians and all so therefore father cyril makes a request for on the behalf of archdiocese and communication center acc for a studio it's a big budget program but i trust in god i trust in providence i trust in your generosity those who are listening to these programs if anyone would like to contribute for our archdiocesan and communications program and especially studio you are welcome i pray for all of you i find in part my blessings especially those that are home and those that are sick perhaps bedridden also that god may bless all of them and once again that everything may be normal thank you god bless Hymn number 491 